I'm uh, Dr. Tom Allison. Uh, I'm an exercise physiologist and uh, director of the sports cardiology program uh, here at Mayo. So the sports cardiology program uh, came into uh, our practice a couple of years ago when uh, Dr. Todd Miller, who's one of the cardiologists here at Mayo, and I um, discussed the need for a focus clinic for people who both exercise and have some type of cardiovascular symptoms. Now often these people go to physician, uh, one physician, maybe several physicians uh, who don't particularly have expertise in sports cardiology uh, and they may get conflicting recommendations or they may simply be told that well the safe thing would be to not participate in sports anymore which is the exact opposite of what they want to do. So we developed this focus clinic um, for individuals who are either having symptoms during exercise or have had some type of cardiac problem uh, and been told that perhaps they should discontinue their competitive exercise. Let me, uh, let me tell you a little bit without, of course, revealing any names of the, the types of patients that come to sports cardiology. Uh, recently, we had an older man who has a pacemaker, which apparently wasn't working well when he went for his long bike rides. And so he came here to get advice uh, uh, on training and also to have his pacemaker adjusted so he was getting appropriate heart rates while he was exercising. Another gentleman, again a somewhat older man, had a stent placed, was told that he needed a defibrillator and should give up marathon running. And so he's here for a second opinion to see whether he needs a defibrillator and uh, whether he um, should indeed give up running or can safely continue that. Uh, we've had a number of high school and college athletes. Uh, one, one woman uh, got very fatigued, uh, headache, uh, nearly passed out about three quarters of a mile into a cross country race. And, you know, what was the cause of this? What, what could be done about it? Another gentleman was, uh, had a resting electrocardiogram with his local doctor, was sent here because the doctor wasn't sure that it was safe for him to exercise because of some abnormality seen on the resting cardiogram. So, of course, it was our job to, to determine, to make a judgment as to whether he could safely participate um, in his uh, exercise, which in this case was uh, triathlons. The way our program operates is that uh, the patient calls and makes an appointment. Uh, that can also be done online. If they have outside records, they're sent and reviewed so that we can avoid duplicating tests and we can move more quickly to the answer. They start out with a thorough cardiovascular evaluation by Dr. Miller or one of our other uh, staff cardiologists involved with the program. An exercise test is usually involved as are other types of cardiac tests like an echocardiogram, perhaps even a coronary angiogram if that's indicated. But we don't, we don't pre-schedule a bunch of tests just to schedule them unless they're indicated and, and have not been done elsewhere. Uh, now many of our patients go on and get subspecialty consultation, for example, with an electrophysiologist. If the patient's having arrhythmias, uh, they may get uh, consultation with a, a valve clinic cardiologist if there's a valve issue. And they also may get consultations with other people, like particularly a couple of the cases recently, we've sent to neurology because it turns out they, although they came in the door of sports cardiology, once we evaluated them, we found that their, their problem was really neurologic rather than cardiology. And so we got them the appropriate evaluation and consultation in neurology. Now, I'm usually involved uh, toward the end of the sports cardiology visit, uh, helping sum up the findings and provide the patient with guidelines on training. Uh, I'm a ex-runner myself, uh, did a number of marathons, qualified for Olympic trials years ago, and so uh, I try to advise them uh, 
on setting up a good training program, set reasonable goals for competition. Uh, we also have a nice sports medicine link, so if the patients have any orthopedic problems, uh, uh, joint pain, muscle pain, uh, they can be sent to sports uh, to the sports medicine center, which is orthopedics and physical medicine, within the same visit while they're here. In terms of the types of patients that we might see, or categories of the patients that we might see, first of all, there's the adult uh, who is a recreational uh, or, or even serious competitive endurance athlete, but now has some type of heart problem uh, and there's a question of the safety uh, and advisability of their continuing with exercise. And uh, another type would be the scholastic or college athlete who needs clearance uh, to continue with sports participation because of some abnormal finding or perhaps is having symptoms during athletic competition and actually is unable to compete for, for physical reasons. It's, it's our job then to to find that problem and, and correct it. Now, we also get some people uh, who are contemplating uh, athletic performance and um, feel that they want some sort of clearance before they do that and some training guidelines, either because of family history of heart problems or past personal history of heart problems or maybe some symptoms that they had while they were starting their exercise program. Or maybe their wife just says, you're not running that marathon until you get properly evaluated. The sports cardiology is obviously an important area uh, because of the fact that cardiovascular diseases are so widespread. Uh, in fact, an adult male in the United States probably has a one in two chance of having some type of cardiovascular disease in his lifetime and an adult female one chance in three of having a problem. You combine that with a large number of people who are participating in marathons and triathlons and cycling events and master swimming and adult hockey and soccer, well then you've got a, you've got a very large number of people who might come up with uh, athletic related uh, heart concerns. While some of our patients are self-referred, many are referred by other physicians. Uh, these physicians want confirmation of their diagnosis. They want uh, perhaps a second opinion as to what we think the problem is. They may want specific therapy for the condition that they have diagnosed. An example might be uh, a patient uh, whose resting electrocardiogram suggests long QT syndrome. Uh, They'd like a confirmatory diagnosis and they'd like advice on whether that patient uh, should be cleared for athletic participation. Another, another circumstance might be a patient with coronary artery disease who's had revascularization uh, and the physician is asking whether uh, it would be appropriate to allow that patient to resume uh, athletic performance after their revascularization knowing that they have underlying coronary disease and if their coronary disease has been managed optimally.